David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. In the fountain pen hobby, I like to be pleasantly surprised. And today I have for you a pen from a brand which until recently I was not familiar with. And that brand is Kilk. And I will say that this pen definitely surprised me. Um, I honestly don't recall how I came across the company. Maybe it was on Instagram, but I was intrigued with what I saw and I reached out to them and they were kind enough to send the pen that I'll be sharing with you today for review. And that pen is called the Celestial. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Kilk Celestial, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Kilk describes themselves as a boutique pen making company. They are based out of Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, their company began as an art studio in 2012, which the man behind the brand, a gentleman by the name of Olch, uh, established with a few traditional artisans. Uh, Olch decided to start making pens in the corner of the art studio. At that time, there was really no professional pen makers in the area. Uh, Olch's creations began to receive some praise, and the Kilk brand was created. Uh, Kilk actually means writing instrument in Ottoman Turkish. The pen arrives in this rather large box. The sleeve slides off, and underneath we have the company logo. I kind of like this logo. It has a nice wave to it. Um, okay, quick aside. When I first saw this logo, I thought that the company had made a uh, stylistic choice to reverse the K uh, in order to have that nice wave look, but that's not the case. Uh, the word is in Ottoman Turkish, and in that Arabic alphabet, the K at the beginning is facing the correct direction. Uh, the letters are all linked together so that when you have an L and then a K, the final K in that language is then reversed. It's always interesting to learn little things like that when I'm uh, researching reviews. Uh, inside the box, we have a couple of things. There is a warranty card with the picture of this specific pen on it. Uh, then inside this very crinkly little bag is a polishing cloth. Uh, this is a treated cloth, the kind which you use with gold and silver and other precious metals. Uh, and then inside we have the pen. This is the Kilk Celestial. Uh, this is a really cool pen. I've been using it a lot lately and uh, really enjoy it. It's really grown on me. Uh, the pen is not a limited edition, but it is produced in limited quantities. Um, it's made from two different colored resins, each of which are pretty neat in their own right. On the cap, it is purple with wavy pearlescent swaths, which are accentuated when the light hits the material in different ways. Then on the barrel, it's made with an ivory colored resin with more of a creamy pearlescence to it. The contrast between the barrel and the cap make for a really nice combination. Uh, it's very pleasing to the eye. Um, and all of the trim on this pen is sterling silver. Uh, due to the handmade nature of this pen, there may be small differences between the models in this line, maybe half a millimeter here or there in length or girth, such as the nature when pens are crafted by hand. Uh, let's take a look at the end of the cap. The traditional pattern on the raised silver finial is called a charcophilic, which translates to Wheel of Fortune. Uh, it's a common element in Turkish design and also the name of the Turkish version of the American game show Wheel of Fortune. There is a rather wide cap band, and I really like the design of this clip. Um, it is sterling silver. Uh, it has the 925 stamp on the underside of the clip, but it was really tough to get a good picture of it. Um, I like the curve and the stacked stair step design. Uh, it's really thick and solid. Uh, on the end, it comes to a bit of a teardrop, or it, it kind of reminded me of a peacock feather as well. The cap angles up, and at the end, there is no traditional cap band, but there are two engraved grooves. Uh, the end of the cap tapers down slightly, and there is a small step down to the barrel, which begins with this very cool design element. This 12-cornered pattern on the silver band is called a dodecagon. Um, it is referring to the complex but perfect order of astrological bodies. Uh, the dodecagon is a common feature in Turkish rugs and tiles as well. The barrel is straight for about an inch. Then it tapers down until you reach another engraved ring, which almost makes the barrel look as if it has a piston knob or a blind cap. 
and then the end of the barrel is flat. The cap twists off in one and a half rotations, and underneath we have a Bach number no. six stainless steel nib. Uh, Bach calls this their 250 nib. Uh, it's engraved with the Kilk logo and is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a slight flare and angles up a very small amount until you reach the cap threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the section has a really nice thickness to it and it's very comfortable in the hand. Overall, this pen just has a real solid feel to it. It's just slightly heavier than you think it would be. Um, I think that's due to the generous use of silver on the band and the clip. That just really helps in that regard. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a threaded converter is provided. Now, I am told that the metal used in this section is stainless steel with no plating applied, so supposedly you can eyedropper this pen safely if you apply the appropriate amount of silicone grease. The company states that this metal should not corrode or interact poorly with ink. Um, there is also a seam in this barrel between the purple and the cream resins, which would typically give me pause in potentially eye dropping a pen. Now, I have not uh, tested whether the company's claims are true, and uh, chances are they are, but if you choose to eyedropper this pen, then uh, I would at least do so cautiously at first, but chances are everything will be fine. Um, the cap is not designed to post. It does kind of fit on the end a bit, but it's not particularly secure. But as I said, it's not designed to post, and it is plenty long enough to use unposted. The Kilk Celestial is available through the Kilk website, as well as select retailers. The pen sells for $290, which I feel is very reasonable for what you receive with this pen. Now, that's a decent price point for the valuation, in my opinion. Uh, you receive a very solid, well-constructed pen with some unique design elements and striking looks. On top of that, as you'll see in the writing sample, uh, the broad nib that I have on this particular pen performs outstanding. It's really a joy to write with. Um, I mentioned these pens are made in limited quantities, so if it interests you, it's probably one of those things you'll need to order and wait for a while to receive. And in the pen world, at times, that's to be expected. Sometimes special pens like this require a bit of patience to acquire. And I feel the Kilk Celestial is well worth the wait. I'm really glad I discovered this brand. Um, they have a couple of other models I look forward to checking out and look forward to seeing what else the company will be introducing in the future. If it's anything like the Celestial, then I'll certainly be paying close attention. Uh, okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Kilk Celestial. I just wanted to give you another close-up look at that material. Um, and the Chateauians really uh, shows off nicely in this bright light. I just really like the contrast between the two colors and the silver. It's just a really nice package that I enjoy. And in regard to some size comparisons, here it is with a Twisby VAC 700. This is the Iris version. Uh, and here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. That's the Sterling Silver model. And then finally, here it is with a Matthew Martin OG Chonk. Uh, now, I'm showing you with this because uh, just recently, just this week, Matthew Martin uh, has released uh, a few more pens that he had gone in hiatus for a while and making pens. He was focusing on some other art and that he has just released some. So if you are looking to pick up uh, an OG Chonk, which is an amazing pen. I just love the section on there. See the section on there, how it's kind of twisted? Um, it's very nice. And these are really nice pens. And so I would encourage you to check out his site uh, if that's something that interests you because they'll probably only be available for a limited time. Then in regard to some other comparisons, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146 and a Pilot Vanishing Point. This is the Raiden water surface. And then finally, here it is with an Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, and this is in the Jonathan Brooks primary manipulation material, which is just fantastic. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Visconti Homo Sapiens, 
And here it is with the Mont Blanc 149, or I'm sorry, 146. Uh, and then here it is with the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Okay, here we have the writing sample. Actually, before we get started, maybe you could see it here. Yeah, and you can kind of see it better in the camera, the 925K that's stamped underneath the uh, clip there. But now let's do the writing sample. We have the Kilk Celestial. And this is a broad stainless steel nib. And the ink I'm using is one of my favorite purple inks, and that is Cross Violet. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a really solid, vibrant. Uh, yeah, I think it's underrated. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to Lamy's Dark Lilac. And then here it is with the Private Reserve Purple Mojo, which is a little more vibrant. This is what the bottle looks like. It's uh, about 63 milliliters, 62 and a half, actually. Um, if you ever have a chance, uh, I'd highly recommend this ink. Like I mentioned before, it's one of my favorite purples. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I am liking this broad Bach nib very much. It's very smooth, um, has a decent ink flow. You can get a little bit of line variation out of here. Um, as I mentioned, the ink flow is rather generous on this particular nib. In regard to reverse writing, it's fairly smooth. And then in regard to some fast writing, The feed has no issue in keeping up. So there we have the Kilk Celestial. Um, you know, I really like it when I find a new brand, uh, especially one that really surprises me and uh, produces something of this high quality. So um, I'd really recommend checking this out. It might be a little hard to find uh, for retailers, but like I mentioned, you can see it on the uh, Kilk site, and I will put a link to that in the notes below. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.